Hello and welcome. Today I want to share a few details about building a Commodore 64, the iconic 8-bit computer from the 80s, including a joystick and a paddle controller. If you are interested in more, there are a couple of posts on my blog as well, and you can find the link in the description below. In a nutshell, to build the computer, you need a case, a circuit board, and a keyboard. New cases are made from the original C64C injection molds by Pixel Wizard, a company in Germany. They ship cases in these nice boxes that use the design language of the original C64C packaging. Next, we need a keyboard. While there are some projects that aim at creating a new C64 keyboard from modern parts, the easiest option is to get an original keyboard off eBay. So that's what I did. Lastly, for the circuit board, I picked an Ultimate 64. The Ultimate 64 is an implementation of the C64 hardware using a modern FPGA. It has all the important interfaces of an original C64, but offers some modern conveniences. For example, you can connect it to a TV or monitor using HDMI and it has an emulated floppy drive built in that takes disk images on a USB stick. And those are easier to find than 5 and a quarter inch floppy disks. Alright, those three parts get now put together. We also need keyboard standoffs. I 3D printed those based on the design from Thingiverse, but you can also buy them pre-made. The keyboard goes on top of the standoffs. Lastly, the wires at the top are for the power LED. Once that's connected, we can close the case. And there we have it. Note that while this uses an FPGA, this is a real C64 as opposed to an emulation. Emulation is fun as well, either like here on a desktop computer or with a dedicated emulator like the C64 Mini. The Mini runs a software emulator on an ARM CPU. There's also a Maxi version that has a working keyboard. The one you see here in the Mini is just for looks. I bought one of those pretty much mostly to play California games on it. This is me failing at the surfing event. And there's a shark. In contrast to emulation, with the Ultimate 64 you have, for example, an actual expansion port that can take actual C64 cartridges. And it opens up the possibility for electronics projects. I picked up some prototyping cartridge boards from TechSelect. The controller ports also work exactly like they do for an original C64. That means that USB controllers don't work like they do, for example, for emulators. There are adapters, but I decided instead to make my own controllers. Let's start with a paddle controller. A paddle controller is a turnable knob that controls, well, often a paddle in the game, like in Pong. Also, we need a button and a connector to plug into the C64. To make sure this all works, I made a quick breadboard paddle controller to test it out. This was before I mounted everything in the case. With that confirmed, I designed a generic enclosure in OpenSCAD. It has these uh, holes that will hold screws. And there is an opening for the cable. And the lid has these lips that make alignment a little bit easier with the uh, base of the enclosure. I printed a small version to make sure everything fits and can be screwed shut. For the paddle controller we need cutouts for the button, the cable and the potentiometer used for the knob. Okay, this is where the button is going to go. Okay. 
the uh, potentiometer goes here in the middle. There's a, a little groove that prevents that it rotates when it turns. And here's an opening for the cable. For this pedal controller design, I actually did not end up using the cable opening of the generic enclosure, but put this separate one here. I made a few test prints to try out measurements for the potentiometer and button. Lesson learned here, since in the final design, the pothole is parallel to the print bed, while the button hole is perpendicular, the tolerances work out differently. In this print, both holes were parallel to the bed. Okay, let's get the pedal enclosure printed. Okay, looking good so far. This fits. Okay, the pot goes here in the middle. A little lug that goes into that groove to prevent it from rotating. Yeah, that works. Now the button and the pot are mounted and the connector is soldered to the end of the cable. And this is how it looks all closed up. With this, we can play Clowns. This game was released in 1983 for the Commodore 64 and it is played with a paddle controller. It's essentially a breakout clone, not necessarily the audio-visual high point of the machine, but also no loot boxes. Next up, let's get a case printed for a joystick. I'm using the generic enclosure again and adapt it accordingly. There is an opening for a single button. Virtually all C64 games are played with a single button, so we can leave it at that. And this area here will hold an arcade stick assembly, the heart of the joystick if you want. In contrast to the paddle controller, I'm using the cable opening from the generic enclosure design. Okay, let's get that printed. And this is how it looks with all the parts mounted. And 
there we go, the final joystick. It's bulky and has some questionable color choices, but it works. Let's put it to the test. This is BC's Quest for Tires, also released in 1983. This image comes with the C64 Forever package sold by Cluanto. And here's Sam's Journey, released in 2017. I'm not particularly good at it. One problem with the new DE9 connectors that I used for the controllers is that they don't fit very well into the controller ports. Their counterparts are normally not flush with the surface and there is a plastic lip that gets in the way. The plug itself is also not as long as a real joystick plug. This isn't an issue until both the connector and the C64 are in their respective cases, so I didn't notice that at first. For the joystick, I solved this with a knife and some hot glue. It's not the most graceful approach. Another option is to get a joystick extension cable. The pins in this one here are a little bit uneven, but it does work. Or even better, using a proper joystick cable to start with. This is what I'll be using should I build another controller. To wrap things up, this is Slither, a small game for the C64 I wrote a few years ago. The objective is to not run into oneself. Pardon the music, I'm not particularly gifted with a sound chip. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think in the comments.